Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig. I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. Hello, good sir. Hello. Let's get into it right away. Quarterback, rumors, free agency, Kirk Wait, Cousins. We're going to talk, talk about a quarterback? Yep. We never talk about quarterbacks. The whole episode this episode. <laughs> this is those other episodes, kind of quarterback episodes. 90% other episodes. Yep, this episode. Under- all, all, all quarterbacks. That's all. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> um, Kirk Cousins. So I'm hearing reports that it's down to two, just yeah. the Jets and the Vikings. I also was hearing today, uh, which would kind of conflict with that report, but that Denver was also very involved and in that he, they, John Elway, and there might be some magic there. He could maybe still go there. Um, what what rumors, what reports are you believing? Should we be believing any of these? Or is this the time of year when everybody is reporting everything and none of it makes any sense? Which ones of these reports are you paying attention to? I guess I think you have to question. look at what are the most consistent, like what teams are most consistently in the discussion, and that does seem to be the Jets and the Vikings. Mm-hmm. A, lot of the, a lot of the reported talk at the Combine was that Cousins has even possibly even decided that he's already going to the Vikings. Yeah, and the Jets the Jets are start already starting to figure out other options, even Case Keenum. Um, See, but, and how could this be if they are not allowed to be speaking <laughs> with one another, Adam? Aren't there rules against these sorts of things? Uh, you know, people talk. Someone sits on one side of a couch, and someone sits on the other side, and they don't face each other. And just you know, but they discuss things. Uh, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk with you know, maybe one holds up a mirror, or, or they FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, each other. or like a hole in uh, yeah. newspaper. I've also so, heard that's you know, good. There's ways you know they can meet up at a, a local, you know, pub downtown or something, maybe, where there's mm. not going to be cameras and reporters everywhere. Um. But yeah, that seems to the Jets and the Vikings um, seem to be the two, the top two teams. And I think if you look at it, he can get Cousins can get more money from the Jets probably than he could get from the Vikings. Yep. Um, but if he wants to be on a team that will contend immediately mm-hmm. for the Super Bowl, then the Vikings are the clear choice. Yeah. Um, Clearly, I think it was Benjamin Albright. He's a pretty you know well known NFL guy on. Twitter and everything else. Uh, he's out of Denver, and he said that uh, I think he reported today that multiple Broncos sources believe that Keenum's already, you know, going to be with the Vikings. So that it's Keenum or Cousins, not Keenum. Yeah, Cousins, Cousins, okay. Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah! <laughs> See, it gets confusing. Wait, what just happened? Okay, good. Um, yeah, that's a better story than Cousins. That'll so work. I mean. Stuff's probably going to change each and every day. That's just how the off season is, and we yeah. really won't know until somebody, until cousin signs on the dotted line somewhere. But as of as of Monday afternoon, um, it appears the Vikings are one of the two top, one of the top two teams, if not the top team for Kirk Cousins, which yeah. is kind of crazy to think about. It really is. It's. It's strange. I'm concerned that he eventually is going to go with the money and go to New York. Because if they're offering what could quite possibly be like a historic, like, lockout-inducing contract, doesn't he have to take that? Won't there be pressure on him from other sources? Because as soon as whatever deal he signs, I've 
seen stuff that Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan already have extensions lined up. They're just waiting for Cousins to sign his deal so that they can probably get make number. sure they get they get paid more than him. Yeah. So whatever whatever number he signs, they're going to get more anyway. So that might not matter as much as people might have thought in the past. Um, but I think he just he can just look at the the Jets roster like. Who do they have? Matt Forte just retired. Their top receiver is going to be suspended. I can't even mm-hmm. think of his name. Yeah. I, um, I know it's not Brandon Marshall. Coming off of, like, I think five wins mm-hmm. last year. <clears throat> uh, they lost a bunch of people on defense. It's not a very – it's not very known for being a very stable organization. organization. Yeah. Um, and the New York media – and the and you have to play outside. You got to play Tom Brady twice a year. Taxes in New Jersey are higher. Yeah, yeah they are. They definitely are. These things are uh, important to know. They are. I mean, yeah, they can offer him more money, but so the Browns can offer him more money too. But yeah, they, see, do you believe this? Like the fully guaranteed? Like there have been talks that the Jets are willing to fully guarantee this contract. And do you think if I don't, if I don't, if it was something so. like that though? That would be the only way, well, to me, I guess. Like, if, if that it's that kind of money, because people are talking, if it's $5 million, $3 million to go one or the other, you know, if the Jets are offering that much more, then that's an easy choice. He's, well, he's going to go to Minnesota, you would think. But Stafford, Matt Stafford's extension that he signed, I think, like August or something last year, he was given the most fully guaranteed money out of, of any contract ever like in NFL history and that was sixty million. Sixty million. So yeah. If Cousins is gonna get a fully guaranteed contract, that would be like around probably like a hundred million. that's not gonna it's not gonna jump up from sixty to a hundred million. Mm-hmm. That would be <laughs> ridiculous. That would be insane. Yeah, it would it would it would totally destroy the like no I would let me rephrase that. It wouldn't destroy the league, but they would have serious issues from yeah. a like uh, NFL players association versus the owners standpoint because yeah. the owners aren't going to want to guarantee those contracts and if that happens and like you said the Rodgers and the Matt Ryans of the world are all ready, well now like, those hey. deals look like chump change compared to what Cousins just got and I'm a better yeah. quarterback than Cousins if I'm Aaron Rodgers <laughs> or Matt Ryan, you uh, know, and then uh, chaos ensues. And it but, and then yeah, there's wrote, a strike and then no football for the rest of the year. So I, I can't about have this, that. I think on the weekend about like, you know, people need to chill out about the guaranteed stuff being thrown around because a lot of the stuff people are talking about like 90 million guaranteed usually doesn't isn't talking about fully guaranteed money yeah like it's talking about like the guarantees that he could possibly earn throughout the entirety of the contract like matt stafford could earn 90 million guaranteed but 60 million of that was fully guaranteed at signing so yeah. really Get sixty million fully guaranteed, and then later on he can earn stuff. Like if he's on the roster at a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. or if he gets injured, like it's that sort of stuff where people are like, "Yeah, we're gonna give him ninety million guaranteed." It's like, no, like I'm sure when the Vi- if the Vikings sign him and that something like that comes out, people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, I gave him so much money." Yeah, it's gonna be like, you "Guys need to hold on." You need to I wait hate. A I hate that argument. The yeah. oh, it's gonna be too expensive, and it's like, well. He's going to be too expensive if he performs poorly. And it's not going to matter what the number is. He's just going to be too expensive. And if he's performing really well and meeting those, uh, how do I want to say, those incentives, you know, and is getting paid 90, you know, million guaranteed because he's got MVP bonuses and Super Bowl bonus, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody's going to yeah. care that he's getting paid that much money because no. they're going to be performing well. Well, like, if he gets signed, I think we, we should probably go over, like, try and figure out which quarterbacks we might think that are better than him because I don't think there are as many quarterbacks that are better than him as many people think. Yeah. I hear a lot of, a lot the, of people like, like, oh, he's, he's like top 20. Like, yeah, top yeah, 20, I, 15, I, I, 15, 16, somewhere in that I, range. I, I, it's like, whoa, I don't know if he's that. Really, you think Andy Dalton's better than uh, Kirk Cousins? You think Joe Flacco is better than Kirk Cousins? Yeah. Like, Josh mm-hmm. McCown? Philip Rivers, maybe. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I would. Old. I would say. He's old though. I would say yeah to Philip Rivers. Getting up there. That, that is, is a really good conversation. We should, yeah, we should do that and go through once well, they once they sign him. We'll do that. We'll go through all thirty two teams and compare them to our new quarterback. 
<laughs> Ugh, that's a scary. I don't know, man. I don't know. Jameis Jameis Winston. Yeah, yeah. Jameis Winston. Is he better? Yeah, I don't know. Mariota. I don't know. Not right now. Not right now. Maybe in the future. Mm-hmm. And Cousins, what is he like? Almost thirty. He's coming into the. Like this is when quarterbacks come to like their prime of their career. Yeah, shoot, he might be two Third or three years, years away from his prime yet. He's only been a starter for three years. Hmm. I. The only thing that I'm. I just don't know if he's going to sign here. I think he can get so much more money at with yeah. New York that I, I think that might be a already, serious already pull. in his career. Yeah, it's very true. In the last two years. And he said he said that where like he's already made a bunch of money it's not really about the money like he, of course he wants to get paid what he thinks he deserves but yeah he's not gonna go to a team where he has to put the entire offense on his back or at least that's the impression that he's making yeah of course I read... people are always like if he doesn't say it about it's the about the money then it's about the money yeah but you know this might this situation actually might be different it might he actually be. might because he's been on the Redskins where they've been losing you know, yeah. for a bunch of years. And he wants something different. Something stable, it sounds like, too. But yeah. see, that's the that's the thing I think that worries me the most is that because he wants stability, because he wants to win, the only way he's going to leave that or turn that down is if, they, if the Jets give him an offer that is so ridiculous that it might ruin how they do contracts <laughs> for yeah. a little while. You know, like... Yeah. And that, I don't like, think they, I don't think that would be a smart move for them though either. Like investing well, no. so much money into one player. Yeah, it like, would be stupid. Yeah, when you don't have other anything surrounding else. pieces. Like he's not, he's good, but he's not an Aaron Rodgers type of quarterback mm-hmm. where you can put the whole team on his back. No. It would be so dumb for them to give him that kind of money, but I think it would be so dumb of him to not say okay. And go there for three years, and then go someplace else afterwards. Because realistically, so? yeah, man. Because realistically, if you uh, if you get that kind of money from them, it's good. I mean, three years. That's all you're gonna have to do. You can demand a trade. You could get out of that if you needed to. And you're gonna. Yeah, but be, who's gonna who's gonna want to trade for that? Oh, whoever needs a quarterback. I mean, there's always right now. And for paid that much, I don't know. Yeah, true. But it's like the whole Osweiler thing. Yeah. Nobody wanted Nobody, yeah. to trade for him because they didn't want to give him the money that he didn't deserve. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and then you're stuck in New York for five years. That would be awful. But I just, for some reason, I, I read an article uh, from, uh, it was like a Washington NBC Sports like network kind of a thing. And it was basically the guy went through almost like a timeline of the like recent events. And every... See, it's hard because it's the Redskins and it's their goofy owner. So it's conceivable from Kirk Cousins' perspective that he knew pretty early on he didn't want to hang out in that type of dysfunction. But every decision that was made by Kirk Cousins and his people was for more money and to get the most money once they hit free agency or to hit free agency. Because like he was offered last season, fifty four million. It was like, I think. Yeah, I think. Well, but I they think, were not interested in negotiating, and they had already. I think that might have that might have something to do with him not want just not, not wanting to be there. Yeah, that's what I then that's what I was thinking was. But at it's a like, certain point, it doesn't if, matter how much money they throw at him. He's just gonna be like, no, I I don't, don't want, want to be. I don't want to be yeah. here. Mm. Like, I want to go somewhere else. Which is, yeah, which is totally fair. And I honestly, I think that he got to that point. If at no other point at the end of last season, he recognized that he was just done with that whole debacle. But when he was, he, he was offered one, it was like in 2015, I believe, after he had started a few games, they offered him an extension as well. And he turned it down, said he wanted to wait. His agent told him to wait. I don't know, man. Not seeing his money, hungry, but it's a smart. It's probably a smart move by his agent to say that too, because mm-hmm. they, they knew how much the franchise tag was going to be, and they figured exactly they and, would probably have to use that. Yeah, and and that see, here's the problem too. And I'm doing. So I've it. seen stuff where I've seen stuff where people are like, "Well, look, look, the Redskins just let him go." And I'm like, "No, I think it's more that they knew they were going to be able to resign him, exactly. and the franchise tag would have been like." 35 million 34 million this year and mm. they didn't want to 
And they were even considering that. Yeah. Considering paying that before they're going to let him because it was they don't want him to go. They don't want him to just to, you know, to just walk. So, I mean, yeah. And it's also the business part of it. And I hate when fans do it and I'm doing it right now. But it's like from the team's perspective, it's like, good on you. Penny pinching. Yeah, you make that guy hold out. Don't give him what he wants. You just make him wait. And then here's a quarterback who is like has every right to just play out his contract and wait for free agency to come up. It's a totally practical perfectly okay move and i'm like i don't know it sounds like he t- wants all the money he's probably not going to come here because he's going to take all the money from the jets because that's all he's ever done and i hate when and people do it's that not, it's a it's good play like, for him but yeah it's not like cousins decided to have the franchise tag put on him either that was yeah. the redskins decision because they once again they probably knew they weren't if they let him go or if they didn't do that then he would not be their quarterback and they didn't really have any other options i think they have like colt mccoy Mm -hmm. so (laughs) well and if you if you're the redskins and you're in that position don't you from a negotiation standpoint don't you just give your dude what he wants if that's your guy and you've decided that he's going to be your you know your long-term starter if he wants wants to work out a deal as well if he wants to be there yeah and that's what i'm saying is wouldn't you make that if from the organization standpoint wouldn't you just what's your what's your number dude yeah or try do something to create some movement to make it work it's like we're did washington just lowball offer him for like three years basically to the point Uh where he was just like i don't want to do this anymore and i'm and i'm out i mean that to me sounds like the only it's the only way i can wrap my brain around yeah this being the situation last year that they franchise tagged him because he had two pretty pretty good years Mm -hmm. of starting like over four thousand yards i think both years it was clear that, you know, he's a solid quarterback and they just didn't want to pay him for yeah. some reason. They wanted to, they gave Albert Hainsworth a hundred million dollars a long time ago. Exactly. So. But like, couldn't give the quarterback <laughs> who you want to be your guy. You couldn't figure out a way to get him enough money to like keep him happy. Like you couldn't find an offer for him through like realistically two and a half years two and a half seasons you couldn't come up with a number for that that seems crazy to me but here we are and now he's a free agent and by all everything i'm reading on twitter it's a done deal and he's coming here man indications do you think should we uh do you want to go through the quarterback carousel do you want should we try and figure out where everybody's going um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this uh, bit, but we're definitely going to have a sounder for it. I'm thinking, yes. uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll just leave it. We'll, I'll come up with it later in post, post, like produ- post, post production. Yeah, circus music. That's circus. great. I'll write that down. Circus music. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Definitely got to get. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. We, we can talk about that later, but I'm going to have bullhorn. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, like, it's it's oh. going. It's going. I'm going to try not to abuse it, but it's a real possibility. Okay. The quarterback carousel. Quarterback carousel. First up, uh, number one in our hearts. And. Uh, Oh, it's just Teddy. I don't know. I, I, the less <laughs> less introduction. I didn't know where I was going to go with that. Where does Teddy Bridgewater end up after all is said and done? Um, this is going to be hard because all of these dominoes are going to fall yeah. after Kirk Cousins goes, and that will change everything, change the whole dynamic of it. But he's not going to have. I don't think he's going to have many opportunities. To be a starter, I'd agree. As many as you may think, I think a really good situation would be for him to go to New York and be the I don't know the the Giants next with man up. No, yeah, yeah, the Giants next man up behind Eli. Yeah, you know maybe Eli has like one more season left, mm-hmm. and Teddy just he's the backup there. He's got Shermer there. Um. But I think I think Arizona maybe maybe Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville I think might be a sleeper. It's a Florida team. It's not Miami. It's we, not Miami. And we've talked about the that Bortles contract and how it's not 
that is not a uh, he's our guy contract. That's uh, I think that now we want to where like that could be a situation where Teddy and Bortles battle it out in training camp. Mm-hmm. That's totally that's my pick for sure is Jacksonville because it it doesn't feel like they are into Bortles and with Teddy and Florida and that whole deal and I feel like you're right I feel like he goes in and competes for the starting job maybe doesn't win it but eventually through that season I feel like Miami's in. just like too obvious they, it sounds like they really still want Tannehill to to be the guy it's so confusing to me the way people have attached themselves to Ryan Tannehill he's like okay but he was wasn't a pretty even... good season when he was healthy with adam gase but it wasn't like nothing incredible yeah really. and he's got bum knees he was a wide receiver at texas a&m until like yeah well, I didn't three he seasons receiver, before he was uh-huh. yeah yeah i have <laughs> one really really good idea that i bet is part of it Unbelievable that combine stuff. Okay, back to the thing. So I think Teddy's going to Jacksonville. You're thinking Jacksonville or Miami, maybe, maybe not Miami because of oh Jacksonville, oh yeah. Jacksonville, Jacksonville. All right, we can do we can do separate choices if you want, but I guess we both think Jacksonville. Yeah, that was that's 100. percent I think he's. It makes me so sad, but I think he's gone. I would love for them to bring him back, but there's just no way he comes back to Minnesota like, if they sign. Yeah, if they sign oh, Cousins, yeah, he won, no way. He wants. Yeah, he wants to. Him, he wants to go somewhere where he can compete. Mm-hmm. If they get cousins, that's not gonna. It's not gonna that ain't here. Yeah. Start. Um. Next up, Case Keenum. I think he's going to Denver. This is not going to be fun if we have the same opinion. Yeah, I think he's going to walk. <laughs> I think he's going to walk in there, and John Elway is going to be like, "Huh?" And Keenum's. Yeah. Be like, well, I, I think he's. Always sees probably a lot of similar traits in Keenum. Yeah, he doesn't himself. Mm-hmm. A little gunslinger and mobile quarterback move around. Uh, yeah, Denver for sure. Uh, AJ McCarron probably another shocking choice, but sounds like the Browns. They wanted him last year. And- oh God. That just, I'm not going to pick them, but that is like a match made in heaven, isn't it? Doesn't that just, doesn't A.J. McCarron <clears throat> just fits as like the next name on that jersey for like. And the Browns draft uh, Josh Allen, probably. Because they're like, oh, he can throw 70 yards. Yeah, exactly. Did you see how far he could <laughs> throw it, though? Yeah, yeah. We sure he did, Cleveland. Does that. We sure did. I saw a video he hit the crossbar from his knees. Oh, cool. You're great. great. The next time you're partying on a football field, you can show that <laughs> off. Because you sure as hell ain't going to use it during a football game because you're on your knees. That means you're down. It's the rules. I didn't come up with them. Yeah. But it's the rules. Um, AJ McCarron. God, I have no idea. You're probably right, though. Cleveland sounds perfect for him. I'm going to go with Arizona, but I feel like Arizona is going to bring somebody else in, and he's not. He's going to be the backup in Arizona. I don't think he's even going to do anything. I don't think he's going to compete with a rookie or something. Yeah. And that would seem, yeah. And I don't know much about A.J. McCarron as far as, like, you know, how good he is. But I have not. not Yeah. It doesn't seem very meh. Talking about him in the past, he couldn't he couldn't beat out Andy Dalton. So really, how good? Yes, you said that last week too. That's a great point. And for a guy for Andy Dalton, how many people in? Come on, they're ready for him to not be the quarterback anymore. And AJ McCarron couldn't do it. So probably Cleveland. Poor guy. And then Cleveland also has the they have the first and the fourth this year. Do you? I've heard talk also about uh, them drafting Barkley, Saquon Barkley, first, some, and then. Yeah, they should do that. That would be very interesting. That guy. Well, should. let's definitely, we'll save that because we'll talk about the combine and that whole uh, whole deal in a little bit. Um, and finally, the last quarterback on our quarterback carousel, Mr. Kirk Cousins. Wait, what about Bradford? Nope, he's out. He's, he's done. <laughs> yep, he's retiring. But well, Cousins is going to the Vikings. So. Nope. 
He's going to the Jets. Oh. And Bradford really? will be the starter. Scratch that. Bradford is going to back up Josh McCown in Minnesota. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and that is, you didn't know, we were doing a bit. That's the worst case worst, scenario. Worst case scenario. Yep. That's our new fun Somebody, segment uh, that we call worst case scenario. Somebody commented on the podcast last week about us talking about how Bradford coming back could be the, would be the worst case scenario. And they're like, do you guys even know football? <laughs> He'd be the best best case scenario. Best case scenario for a guy with degenerative knees and can't. Yeah, stop. his coach said he has degenerative knees. <laughs> you don't. He doesn't say. You don't say that if Mm-mm. you're confident in him staying healthy. <laughs> exactly. That's not. That's not a supportive thing to give a guy that you believe is going to stay out there. That's not what you say. Oh. It did sound like Zimmer. And his combine presser was kind of saying his goodbyes to like the three quarterbacks. That combine presser slash, yeah, his he did an interview with uh, uh, oh, Paul, beforehand, yeah, yeah, with Paul Allen too. Oh, and yeah, those were two of like the most honest in like, <laughs> oh my god, it was incredible. He like was talking about Laquan Treadwell needs to get out of his own way. And here's an yeah. example of some stupid stuff he was doing, running steps in the like middle of the night. Cause he thinks he's doing better, but he's just, I was like, Oh, ah, it's the truth. Like who, ah, when did he start telling us this stuff? Is it just cause it's the off season? I think it's also his way of like, he didn't sit necessarily say anything bad about Treadwell. He just said like, you know, he's got some, some things to work on. You know, he's got to be smarter and, like, you don't need to overwork yourself. Like, you're, you're good enough, you know, as yeah. is. So, like, I don't think it was maybe a dig like some people might have interpreted it to be. Mm. But that's just how Zimmer kind of motiv- – his motivational tactics. Yeah, is kind yeah. Of like, Definitely hey, using guy, it for motivation. He's for got sure. a bunch of talent and, you know, he's doing stuff to not be able to use that. Yeah. He also, in that Paul Allen interview, while talking about Treadwell, referenced a thing that Parcells used to talk about, where it was like something about the first year. Oh, three show, years. Yeah. yeah, and then the third one was, see you later, you're, not, you're yeah, cut. Yeah. Not good, yeah. And Which, it, you know, could be traded this year. Yeah, dude, I was just, yeah. it made me so happy to like hear this interview with Zimmer where he was like, and this needs to happen, and this needs to happen, and Sam Bradford shouldn't be skiing, and this, yeah, Keenum is amazing last said, year. I don't, I don't think he said he shouldn't be skiing. He's just like, no, I know. He's a great athlete. He's skiing right now. <laughs> Thanks for that. It just, you know, set the image in my head of exactly. Sam Bradford skiing. Oh, I bet he's got really cool sunglasses on. He's got a neon jacket. <laughs> yeah yes oh my god yeah totally <laughs> it looks like he's taken directly from saved by the bell yeah you ever seen hot tub time machine oh uh, no i see i've seen bits and pieces of it on tv yeah. but i've never like seen it seen it what i was thinking of when they went back to like a ski lodge in the 80s <laughs> and they all look like that <laughs> sam bradford slides in that makes sense yeah so uh quarterback carousel josh mccown in minnesota good way to end it <laughs> Good way to. I end think. It. I actually think Bradford's probably gonna either end up in Cleveland or Arizona. Mm. Arizona would make Although sense. Although he, he does, he is like a typical Jets quarterback. And they're like, oh, we'll give this guy a shot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the weird sleeves—they go perfect there. Everybody, lots of quarterbacks in yeah. Jetland wear the goofy sleeves, so fit right in. Testaverde. Yeah. Vinny Testaverde. That guy. He was the headbutt in the wall and hurt his neck, right? Wasn't no, that, that was Gus Verratt. Oh, Gus Verratt. Thank you. I knew that. Former Viking. Gus yes. Verratt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, unbelievable. What did Vinny Testaverde do? Oh, he played in... Cleveland. Tampa. Where New York. College was Miami, right? Baltimore. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. When they were good. Yeah, when they were... Yeah. Okay. The Combine, I guess we can talk about the Combine a little bit. Did you watch any of it? What do you, first of all, what do you think of the whole thing? 
like the entire like process that that it's like a huge event now or i shouldn't say huge event but people go nuts over the combine it's a big deal and i i don't put as much into it as maybe like some people do Mm. based on you know like this guy ran a 4-4 and this guy ran a 4-5 like Mm, it's not really gonna matter on the football field exactly um (laughs) that's the thing it's like none of it but you're like not there's certain stuff that I'd pay attention to, like the bench press. You know, mm. if a guy puts up a ton, then you know, see he's strong. But yeah. At the same time, if it's like an offensive lineman, it doesn't really tell me a whole lot because he could be super slow and super strong at the same time. Yeah, because you could be strong all day, but if you can't get to where the guy is yeah, to block him, too slow. He's not gonna matter. Get um, certain stuff like that. Like I wrote, I wrote an article last week for the comeback on stuff they should actually you know do to make the evaluation process maybe like actually able to what's going on there? Uh, sorry train here uh, <laughs> so <laughs> to make the evaluation process you know actually a little more helpful like have the quarterbacks receivers and corners and safeties all work out on the same day that way you have receivers Going against DBs, mm-hmm. quarterbacks actually have to throw to players that are being covered. First off, yes, and, you know, receivers have to get open, DBs have to cover. You know, stuff that you actually see in a game. Same thing with like offensive and defensive linemen. Have those guys go against each other. Yes, like, and you know maybe this is some people think this is stupid, but throw some pads on them. Yeah, there is the here. Okay. I think the combine, when it when it started, when it first got going, made a lot of sense for the reasons that they were doing it. The thing that we're doing now, That's 2018, a work, a, like workout, show. it's it's ridiculous. And and like you, like, yes, you get 40s. <clears throat> what does that teach you? This guy's fast. Well, is he fast with pads? Can he cut? Can he avoid Josh, people? There's, Josh Robinson was fast. Trey Wayne is fast. Yes, and there are, and I will say this: there are drills that show. I mean, they're you know that straight speed, and then there are the agility drills and the back and forth, and you know they do things that you can glean certain info from. When like when someone's saying like Lamar Jackson, you know, he didn't look so good throwing today, I'm like. I really don't care. <laughs> no, well, and see, and that's the thing right there is the headline shouldn't be Lamar Jackson didn't look good at the combine, you know, or you throwing at the combine. It should be Lamar Jackson without pads in a non game situation, <laughs> throwing to guys he's never thrown to before, had a tough time completing pass. Like, it's just none of it has anything to do with how these guys are actually going to perform on a football field. I think pads would help, but the more ideas I have about, like, how could we make this better? How could we make this? It's the senior bowl. It's the week of the senior bowl. That's where you get that information. Bring all those guys. That's what that makes sense. Let's do that. Can we take the media attention from the combine? That's not going to happen. No, it's not. And it bothers (laughs) me because the senior bowl stuff, that you can actually get some, you know, some football information. You can watch guys, offensive and defensive linemen, go against each other. You can watch these guys, you know the wide receivers while they're covered quarterbacks make decisions yeah. based on I think I think the workout to me is more secondary than like the other stuff like the the interviews with the yes. team that was going like to be that. my next point it's not the focus right now seems to be for the media and all that and the people on Twitter is like what are the numbers what are the drills what is that and no the reason we're doing this is so that these guys can talk to those guys it's a job and do the interview that's exactly right it's a big job interview and they have them run around for a little while too but here we are here i am this weekend 16 <laughs> hours of combine coverage just why it's just think, on yeah, it was just I on i don't think i watched any of it i only just watched clips on on twitter stuff that you know people are like whoa so I was like, I guess I'll just watch this little clip for like a minute. So, but that's like the only stuff I didn't. That's a much better way to do it, by the way. I didn't, I, I didn't really watch it because I'm like, I. Don't... It's bad TV. It's bad TV. I, feel I bad love like, Rich Eisen. I feel bad for people like, what is it, Billy Price from Ohio State who like tore his pack on the the bench oh, press. Oh, brutal! No, I didn't so, hear that. Like, he just lost a ton of money because he was projected first rounder, possibly to the Vikings. 
and that's not going to happen anymore. He just lost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that is what I don't like about the combine. Like, dudes getting hurt. Yeah. Because they're doing these stupid drills that have that don't really matter at all. I, but the combine's gotten so big that they're never going to, like, do away with it. They might add some stuff to make it better or whatever. But Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to. Yeah. I wish they would just have pro days so that everyone goes and see those individual players. And that's it. Yeah. Well, it but just, that's not going to happen because the combine's just it's too big. Yeah. Of an event, and, well, and the, they and might the, put it in prime time. Oh God, are future. you serious? Oh, they're trying to make it an even bigger deal. Yeah. Uh, like I get from a team perspective why you would want to do it because it's you know the pro days are scripted you know and they it's on them. Well, so it's you the, can maybe ask or whatever. These guys are practicing these drills for like months before. Yeah. And they know what they're what they're doing. Mm-hmm. How, see, and I guess maybe that is part of what I dislike so much about those drills is that these guys are elite level, like professional level football players, and they go away for five months to work on cone drills. Dash. Yeah, mm-hmm. to work on cone drills and 40 yard dashes so they can impress the, like, yeah. shouldn't they just be working on football stuff? Can't we, can't we, can't we That's make a world? That's probably why. Where- bunch of rookies now like it takes an extra year for them to adapt because they don't have that off season that full off season of you know preparing and practicing yeah. football yeah becoming a professional football player no they're too busy practicing drills so they can that's funny i did see i think it was last week i was on xavier Rhodes' instagram he was like live or something and he was just boxing and i was like well, that makes sense because you know he's got to use his hands at the line scrimmage and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Makes a ton of sense. Yeah, but he's a veteran. He's a veteran, and he knows what stuff he has to do. You know that will translate to the field. Exactly. You know? Yeah, he doesn't have to worry about a transition from a lower level of competition to a higher level of competition because he's been there. These yeah, guys he was, do. He was a guy that I think some that people actually thought was. That ran slower in like the forty when during his compound. I think it was still like a four four six or something like that. But some people mm-hmm. thought he could go faster. But that didn't matter when he, you know, had that interception against the Cardinals last year and ran a hundred yards the other way. Yeah, that, that didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and well, and that stuff just, yeah. Like they have kickers running forty yard dash. They have kickers running forty yard dash. It doesn't. It just they have offensive linemen running forty yard dash. The offensive lineman thing is. Although that may have been my favorite part of the combine to yeah. watch, <laughs> it was just awesome to watch those guys. Like, I mean, some of those dudes are amazing. How big they are, and how fast they can move. Yeah, it's terrifying. It's yeah, yeah, monsters. But why do you have a guy that? Be, when is his job going to be to run forty yards down the field? Like, I mean, not that often. Maybe a couple of plays a game. Maybe if you're lucky. Never. <laughs> Never. Like, I mean. Once a year. Yeah. I'm just thinking downfield blocks just in case. But even 40, I mean, 40 yards is a long. 40 yards. That's a long way to go. <laughs> and, you're not run- and, and you're not running at full speed. <coughs> no. Either no. Way. You're, yeah, yeah. You're trying to stay in front of the dude or whatever and block so, yeah, for him. Like that. Like, can't we come up with a, shouldn't there be an offensive line version of the, like, have it the 10-yard yeah. 10 yard thing how fast can he get to where he needs to go how fast can he go backwards to do that if he wants to be a tackle that might tell me more about what he's going to do as a professional yeah, football I player i think they should like with running backs they should like get a carry and then like see how fast they can turn the corner and like just yeah yes and run stuff like that like yeah stuff that actually they'll do it should be do. an obstacle course is what it should be whatever that's fine That'd hand up the ball obstacle course who did it better they do that at, they do that at the pro bowl yeah, they could do that. And do you think that Saquon Barkley would probably finish first in that? Yes. Probably. Yeah, because he's really good at football, and that's the whole thing. Some of those running backs that I was looking, I did see some of the 40s. I guess I did watch some of the combine because I watched when they were running the 40s, the running backs. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, these guys look like linebackers. Like their arms are like bigger than their face. And, and, they're, like, and they're running four three forties and stuff and like that's the scary oh my god <laughs> when you start getting into the four three stuff that's when and like that's like different gear of scary fast yeah. 
What is the record for the 40? 422, I think. 422. John, John Ross last year. God, that's Byron unbelievable. Stewart. That is so fast. Ugh. Help him on the four, field. Two, two. The combine. We're going to do a... I don't know when we're going to do it. We might have to wait a year. But we're going to do a new combine. We got, where we're a full we got, episode yeah. where we're just going to be like, here's how we're going to... We got plenty of off-season. That's a great point. Stuff. Maybe we'll do that in a couple of weeks. New combine. I'm going to circle that. Say that for July or something. Yeah. June. There you go. Um, last thing on the combine, uh, probably the biggest story out of the combine, is uh, the kid from Central Florida, Griffin, right? Is that his name? Sha- Shaquem. Shaquem Griffin. And his outrageous... His, his, it's just the coolest story. Three hands. Yeah. The, and his unbelievable his 40 time what was he was a 432 wasn't he 438 that's fastest uh by linebacker ever at least since 2006 I think. yeah god what did i see i thought i saw 15 years was, that might not be right it was fastest it, it, at least it was fastest by any defender weighing 225 pounds or more four three it, it, oh that's terrifying and then he also only has one hand but can do a gazillion bench 20, press 225 that is unbelievable i think von miller did 21 and uh cleo mack did 23 and those guys got two hands yeah and they're big dudes this guy not so much still like did that many. unbelievable he's not that he's not that big either but yeah he'll get he'll get drafted do you think that he, I mean, is he a special teams guy? Is he a possible starter? Probably, probably the first year. But if he puts a little more, a couple more pounds on, mm-hmm. a couple more pounds of muscle or whatever, maybe get to like 235, 240. He, he was the, uh, what the, was it the American Athletic Conference it is now? Like AAC or whatever in college football? Yeah. With like UConn, UCF or whatever. Oh, right, the, right, right. Yeah, okay. He yep. was the... He was the defensive player of the year in 2016. That was his first year as a starter. Really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 11, 11, 11 and a half sacks or something like that. Man, it's so tough with those kind of, I don't want to say those kinds of awards, but when they get awards like that, because Michael Sam was also a very uh, yeah. decorated yeah. college player. I uh, couldn't really find a home, obviously. He made the, the all-conference team last year and this year, too. So. Mm-hmm. I would just love. He's consistent. He's I, pretty consistent. I love that story, and I am now rooting for dude. Yeah. I just want him to. I just think it's incredible. Just amazing. I would love to. I would love to for the Vikings to take a chance on him. Um, I don't know. They they don't have a fourth round pick, and I think that's probably right around going to go. Like go. So I, mean, I think maybe someone would be reaching if they hadn't got him in the second round, third mm-hmm. round, maybe. Yeah, third that, round. I think was the highest. He might go, but yeah, the Vikings don't have a fourth round pick, so and they're late third round, so that could, could that could be someone that possibly they take a chance on. That would know, be cool. If, if I would they love don't, that. They're you know drafting best player available, or Rick Spielman you know gets like thirteen more picks like he usually does. Yeah, so. that was you. Know, I am kind of waiting for closer to the draft, but I'm very interested in how Spielman is going to sure. maneuver around because those picks are goofy and they're all or I shouldn't say all, but a lot of them are way late compensatory, yeah, they, they like six three, rounds. Three in the sixth. Yeah. Yeah. So and then, I, I mean, yeah. probably not going to get a lot out of that. So you'd think he would maybe do some shuffling. They don't need a lot. Like depth wise is more what they need this year. They're yeah. pretty set at starters and stuff. I think if Kirk cousin signs, it's going to decide a lot of their other moves too, like to, Instead of going after like a free agent offensive lineman or guard or whatever, they'll just re-sign Nick Easton or something like that. And yeah. Maybe draft somebody. They're more – I feel like the Vikings are more – they go after more like the top undrafted free agents yeah. after the draft, at least recently. Yeah, I was going to say the last couple of years. And then it seemed to give them more money than the rest of the league Closer. is willing to. Yeah, and that could so – like, uh, maybe that's part of their plan again. Like Adam Thielen might have been – one of those part of that yeah yeah that'll be interesting to see how uh 
dominoes. Yeah, I, and it all, yeah, this whole thing all is waiting, just waiting for Kirk Cousins to pick where he's going to go. Yep. Unbelievable. What do you think the Vikings' second option is, if not Cousins? God, that's a great question. You'd think it would be Keenum. It didn't sound like Zimmer liked him too much. No, it didn't. And so that maybe makes me gonna, think that it would hear, be Like when he said, Eddie. like, is he going to be the guy from last year? Or is he going to be the guy from the Rams? Yeah. <laughs> that's not a, you know, big boost of confidence. No, those are... Uh... I think in Zimmer's mind, he wants Teddy back, and that's who he wants as a starter. For sure. That was what I was just going to say. Over, I don't think even he... over Cousins. Really? Yeah, I think that... Because you, you heard what he said. He doesn't want to cripple the team or whatever with, like, paying too much for a quarterback but at the same time i don't think the vikings would do that either they're not going to get into i don't think they'll get get into a bidding war with a team over cousins they're going to give him an offer and if he doesn't want it then that's fine and they'll move on from there yeah because they're definitely not going to want to compete and and do that yeah exactly what you said with zimmer and to be honest if you go back and you look zimmer and keenum never there was never i mean they got the job done and they got along just fine but he never wanted him to be the guy he always wanted it to be teddy so that would make sense if that was their second move but but i mean does teddy want to come back do you think he goes someplace else because they're maybe offering more money i mean who's gonna he he owes anything to the vikings for you know no keeping him around for two years and helping him rehab and stuff no i don't think so i think the fans love him and i feel like that yeah. is a draw you know for him but i don't think that he i don't think he feels that i don't think he should feel that way but i don't know i also though i he's like a loyal loyal kind of kid though he does yeah but it also the minute it's just such a bad idea for nfl players to do the loyalty thing because at the f- as soon as they can, that team is going to cut you loose and do whatever oh, yeah. is best for them. So I just don't think it would be, I don't know. You just look at the Chargers cut Ladanian Tomlinson. Yeah. <laughs> he had like and 30 that, touchdowns in one year. Exactly. And then, well, and it's like the Cousins thing. And it's like, oh, dad, he's money hungry and that this guy wants. It's like, well, of course he is. And they all should be because the minute these teams get a chance, they're going to screw him. And so, yeah, NFL for a guy players, like Teddy, it's like, go do your thing, dude. Don't like. NFL players, yeah, they don't get guaranteed contracts, like fully guaranteed, like in baseball. Or, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure if they do in basketball. I know they get paid a ton in basketball. I don't know if they're fully guaranteed. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in football, they, you, they cut you like that. Do you know that the Mets are still paying Bobby Bonilla? Oh, no. Yeah. Is that like 15 years? Yeah, because they're fully guaranteed, and they're like, all right, we'll just give you a million dollars forever, basically. It's like you won like a scratch-off ticket, and you're like, a million <gasps> years. Dude, that's like, oh, my God. Every year, Bobby Bonilla just like, woo, here it is again. Thank you, New York Mets. Some, some of those horrible horrible deals like Kevin Brown, Bobby Bonilla. Yeah, oh, God, baseball has so many. Well, the problem, or I shouldn't say problem, but those teams make so much money. Like the Dodgers, they have the guys yeah, that they are paying to not be on the team yeah. would be like the number 15 payroll in the league. And that's yeah. just of guys that aren't on their team anymore that they still are paying dead money to baseball is so confusing to me why they don't have like a salary cap i don't it's the goofiest league because it's been around so So long and they're like tradition yeah yeah they're so steep and then like this is always how we've done it that's like field dimensions none of the field dimensions Mm -hmm. on the outfield are the same in any stadium nope all different i don't i don't understand that houston had a hill in their outfield why doesn't every team do that the Red Sox have that giant wall. They still have that giant wall. Mm-hmm. Like, why yeah. doesn't every team do that? Why doesn't they, every team just build a giant wall? I don't know. They Yeah. And, well, and I guess that's part of what makes baseball so cool is that you can – it's always the same game, but even the same game can look so different in different ballparks. Because then, like you mentioned all those, and then you go to Tampa, and they play in, like, the ugliest, weirdest dome. They thing. still play there? At Tropicana, yeah. They sign, like, a – some outrageous it was like a 30 year lease or something so they can't even like they can't get out of it like they have not wanted to be in there for like 10 years and they can't get out of it 
because it's i feel like it's owned by like the government City like yeah it's like a yeah municipal situation so it like they cannot leave yeah and i don't know it's weird that was i hate slash love the metrodome now that there are a they're playing baseball in the in u.s bank i saw that they are yeah 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 and it's supposed to be really nice but like the metrodome that was not made for baseball at all (laughs) but that was such a cool yeah it was such a fun atmosphere such a goofy place to play baseball that it kind of had its own charm to it i guess old old video games like mvp baseball or something Mm -hmm. hidden off the wall in in the metrodome or something like that Oh, God, the dome. So terrible. So that was how I, like, grew up. That was all my sporting events. My first, like, big, like, oh, Oh, my God. It was all at the Metro. Everybody played there. Yeah. And so I grew up, and then they got these new stadiums. And I, as an adult, went to that Target field, and I was like, oh, this, (laughs) okay. The real field. I probably would like baseball a lot more (laughs) if I would have known that this is what a, a real major league baseball park is supposed to look like because i never saw that it was just the the carpet and concrete that's how the, <laughs> the metronome that was the whole thing that's kind of how the padres field out here makes me like every time i go there i'm like i want to get into this but it's the season's so long <laughs> season is so long the games are so long and that's cool if you like have like a built-in if you're into it yeah and and, because my dad is a big baseball guy and played a ton when he was younger and so i do have the like you know it's a a 2-1 count is he gonna throw a curveball or a fastball here like i can watch baseball on that level and so it doesn't feel as long to me but i i mean god four and a half hours (coughs) like for an entire summer yeah yeah i I like to play i watch the playoffs yeah, and that is fun. Yeah, and the, see, and that's the other. Yeah, hockey is the like best or worst example, depending on who you're asking. But playoff hockey, incredible. I love it. Regular season up. hockey, nah, I'm good. I don't need to. Was it overtime? It's like five overtimes. Mm-hmm. Just do yeah. a shootout. Screw it. I love the regular season stuff. Like even with the NBA, oh, like, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. the, you can tell the NBA season is too long because the best player in the league every year takes like two weeks where he just doesn't really care. Yeah, yeah, where he just doesn't really care. And they, they, oh, what's guy, happening like, to Cleveland? Oh, my God, it's happening again. It's like, well, And he comes bet. back and like, I yeah. fixed it, don't worry. Oh, we're in the finals again. Are you for the eighth straight year? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Season's too long. But don't, yeah, but but then they'll tell you about how their back-to-backs are just, oh, it's so rough, and, like, we need more rest. And they rescheduled everything so that there were less back-to-back games for these guys, even though LeBron can just not care for them. LeBron's still going to play, like, 95 games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think it winds up being, like, 130 games. Yeah. All together for the it, it, well, it, the oh, if they play seven. I seven. was just gonna say yeah, because Cleveland, Cleveland, the year they won the championship in the seventh game, I believe that was their one hundred and thirtieth game of that season. I could be wrong. I could be making that up. It's more like I think it's more like one hundred and ten. Nope, I don't believe it. One hundred and thirty would be like fifty more games. Fifty more games if you do no, it's five in the first round. Third, Four. yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, like one ten. <laughs> I know they play a lot, but maybe that was on the <laughs> the radio show. Is doing the uh, K fan has a preposterous statement tournament, and Shannon you Sharp was on it. I might have believed one of those. Yeah, I might have. That might have been part of it. <laughs> Shannon Sharp said something preposterous. Yeah, right. Shocking. Oh, fun Shocking. fact: cause we we're talking about baseball. Mm-hmm. It's my great, great, great grandpa is in the Hall of Fame. Really. Like, the Dodgers with Whoa. Uh, Jackie, Jackie Robinson. Oh, for cool. Yeah. That's, so that's pretty cool. Very cool. So, well, yeah, my, my sports career was, uh, you know, getting cut from the soccer team as a senior. <laughs> and, uh, Brutal. They cut you as winning, a senior? Winning back-to-back CYO basketball championships. So. Man. Who cuts a guy as a senior? That's rough. Yeah, politics. You know, high school. Yeah. That's no fun. Politics. Look at me now. Yeah, see, look at you. I'm on TV now. Yeah. You're on TV, on the interweb, writing. It's, I mean, you, you made it, bud. Yep, made I'm, like it. The Michael, I'm like the Michael Jordan of uh, 
sports writing. Totally. You cut me, you cut me in high school. You better you watch know. out. Colby won an Oscar, so I did I mean, see that. Michael Jordan, you, somebody's got to win. Was it for a doc- an Oscar. documentary that he did? No, it was a thing. He wrote it actually. It was like a short animated thing. Like it was. Yep. I think it's called a love letter to basketball. Why? Why is he so good at everything? I don't know. It bothers me. <laughs> I maybe the best tweet in my life though. Right after he won it, I was like, "Oh, I'm so excited for Michael Jordan's movie next year because there's no way Jordan's letting him oh, yeah. get an Oscar well, without did, Michael Jordan." Did see? Uh, I I tweeted that Kobe has more Oscars now than Alfred Hitchcock. So. Oh God, that's sad. That's too bad. Right. Well, uh, now that we're talking about our tweets we should probably that's, pro- <laughs> that's probably enough podcast for today <laughs> yeah you you gotta let people know where to check out your stuff now since oh yeah great anymore. yeah great point i am now writing editing the sporting so yeah. go there for all your minnesota sports news right? yep all the minnesota sports news all the sports Everything. including the ones that i just uh talked about Vikings, how i don't Eagles, like <laughs> yep Eagles. A lot of Wild, Viking stuff, a lot of T-Wolf stuff. College a little bit. I actually yeah, am going to go to the yeah. Gopher Spring game this year, though, so that'll be cool. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be good. Maybe get some, some credentials. You know, yeah, like that's what I mean. I might as well, right? Might as well. Might as well. Spring, but spring yeah. in Minnesota, what will be like? 20? 20 degrees? Oh, my God. I should. It's dark out, but it is a blizzard. It's like started at three o'clock, and it's going to be ten inches by the time it's done. Evidently, it, it like I was driving home, maybe fifty feet visibility. It'll be seventy-seven tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Now I'm done with the podcast for today. <laughs> All, All right. right. We'll see you next, week. next week. Skull bikes. Skull. Thank you.